Today, I'm gonna to break down for you what farming is, how to pick your farm area correctly, how to create a successful farming strategy. And if you stay to the end, I'm gonna share my top five farming strategies for 2024. So first, let's talk about what is farming in case you're not familiar. Farming is a marketing and lead generation strategy where you focus on one specific area over a long time horizon so that you can generate consistent leads and brand awareness in one specific area. So the idea is to be a big fish in a small pond instead of being a small fish in a big pond trying to be everything to everyone. Ultimately, the goal is to become the go-to agent in your area so that you have more authority over other agents who are working everywhere. You focus in that one specific area, which gives you a lot more authority and trust with those people because you just know it better than everyone else. It simplifies everything. It simplifies your messaging. It simplifies the videos and the content that you create. You know, put signs in the yard in that area, put bus benches. You become a memorable face in that neighborhood and the go-to expert, right? Because the fear is always, I'm going to miss out on business from other places. Well, you're not. You're, you're probably going to get a lot more business in that one place. And then you're going to get referred to other people outside of that area. And you're actually going to work in more than one area, but your marketing message still remains focused in that one area. So how do you go about picking a farm area? Well, let's talk about this. The first thing you're going to want to do is probably pick somewhere close to home. Now, this may sound obvious, but you want to avoid long drives whenever possible. So pick somewhere close to home. And if you really want to farm a specific area, maybe you should move there because at the end of the day, if you want to farm an area and you don't live there, it makes it a little tougher to say, hey, I don't live there, but I'm farming this area. When you actually live there, it just gives you a little more authority. Like if you're going to stand by that area and say, I really love this area, I'm committed to it. The fact that you live there really helps with that message. So really this opens the door for you to connect with people and prospects more easily. And if you're in the know about the neighborhood, you'll know right away when someone is thinking of selling, when things are shifting because you're actually living and breathing that. The second thing is the size of your farm area. How big should it be? Now, there's no exact science to this. If you're in a big city, that can change. If you have a huge team, that can change and you might have a bigger area. But generally speaking, you're at about 500 to 2,500 homes. What I find when I'm talking to agents is they generally want to go bigger because they feel like they're going to miss out on opportunities. But I promise you, creating a farm area gets much more manageable when it's on the smaller side. Because because the reality is each home you add to your farm increases the budget you need to farm that area effectively. And the key to success with farming is being consistent. So you need a farming area that you will be able to maintain consistently. A mistake way too many agents make when they first start with a farm area is trying to target way too many homes. They can't keep up, the message doesn't land, and they end up dropping the farm area altogether. So start small and grow from there. It's like when you're trying to be, let's say, an influencer. It's the same idea. Most influencers you've seen today are pretty broad broad, but they usually started niche. And it's the same with a farm area. You start niche, become the go-to expert in that niche, and then you expand outward from there. So how do you do this? Well, you really want to research your farm area, and here's four factors you want to consider. And the first is geographic research. You want to compile a list of all the geographic features of an area that will affect the sale of the property, either positively or negatively. Cities are generally too big. Like your farm area can't be Seattle or New York City, obviously. A county is probably too large. A neighborhood is usually where you want to be, but there's a few important factors to consider. Like, do people search on the internet for this area? Like oftentimes people don't search by county, but I've encountered some cases where they actually do, depending on that area. So it depends. Now, here's a guide for you. Like I know someone in Toronto who does Toronto lofts and like lofts are not the most common property type, obviously. So she's in a big area, but focusing on one specific property type. That's how your message can really land, right? If someone's really looking for lofts and they want that two-story loft situation, like you can be their go-to. And then the third thing is you need to figure out the inventory. So how much inventory for that given niche is there? Is it in that 500 to 2,500 range? Well, that's something you're gonna wanna look for. Now to layer on to the inventory research, you wanna consider a few factors. The first is the absorption rate. The absorption rate helps you predict the number of months worth of inventory that exists in a particular place. Less than four months is considered a seller's market and more than six is considered a buyer's market. A four to six month range is what's considered a balanced market and this is a good indicator that the market's pretty healthy and you can probably soak up both sides of the deal. Now, these can vary a little bit depending on your market, but that's just a general rule of thumb. The second thing to consider is the turnover rate, which assesses the number of homes in your farm area that sell in a given time 
compared to the overall number of homes. A turnover rate of five to 10% is considered average in a neighborhood. So these two rates will help you determine whether or not an area is a good farm area at any given time. And finally, number four is demographic research. You really wanna have data on the kinds of residents in this farm area, like their average age, family status, typical level of education, preferred method of communication, what social media platforms they're on, if any. So basically, if it's a much older crowd, you might change your marketing message away from Instagram and more into Facebook and different platforms, right? You may even want to run newspaper ads if you're in a senior's area. So it really depends the demographics of where you're going to target, of where you want to have your marketing message land. If you're in a city and you're downtown and the audience is like young professionals, you know, YouTube is probably a good place for you, potentially Instagram as well. Usually we recommend for social media picking two and using them together. So last couple things when choosing a farm area, and I promise we'll get to those five strategies that I spoke about in the beginning, check for competing real estate agents farming that area. Now, this is a big misconception is to think someone else is doing it, therefore I can't. It's almost like saying because Uber existed, we shouldn't have created Lyft or Uber shouldn't have created Uber Eats because there was already food takeout apps. But the reality is, is competition is good and your message is not going to resonate with anyone. So it's good for consumers to have options. That means they've proven out that that area is farmable in a successful way. And then you create a second option. You do things slightly differently. You take a unique angle and some people are going to resonate with your message over the other person's. And this is what I tell my students on YouTube all the time. You're not going to resonate with everybody. Anyways, the final thing is make sure you compare a few different farm areas before you finally decide what you want to do. But when you do decide, commit to it because the only benefit you're going to get from this is if you do it long term. So now that you've picked a farm area, and I hope that's helped you pick a farm area, you can focus on the strategies of actually farming that area. So let's get into it. So after working with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of real estate agents on their marketing strategy, here are my top five real estate farming strategies. The first is circle prospecting with door hangers. Okay, so when you get a listing circle prospect, you guys should all know what that means going around, door knocking, prospecting around the neighborhood, letting them know you just sold a property. Now, a cool way to do this is to have a door hanger with a QR code that links to a video. Now, this can be a bomb bomb, a loom video, something like that. And do this when the property is listed and do this when the property is sold. Congratulations, your home just increased in value by whatever, $20,000, $30,000. The second thing is Google search ads and retargeting ads. So what we're gonna do here is if anyone is searching Google in your area, in your neighborhood, rather than having them go to Zillow or Realtor, those big websites that they typically go to, we put an ad in front of them when they say, hey, condos for sale in Kitsilano, Vancouver, BC. We can put an ad in front of people that search that exact term, drive them to your website, show them properties. A percentage of those people are going to sign up, but everyone who goes to your website is going to get hit with retargeting ads now. So these ads are going to show up on YouTube, on Google search, on Google Display Network, which is websites and blogs all over the place. For our clients, we also do Facebook ad retargeting as well. So ads show up on Facebook, on Instagram. Once they get into your digital ecosystem, we do not want them to leave. A third farming strategy, and I love this, is a niche newsletter. So a really niche specific newsletter that you send out every single week. Now with our clients, we build them a CRM system that divides their pipeline stages into a hot nurture and then non-responsive every one of them get your weekly newsletter. And if you do this with a niche farm area, it's really easy to do because what you're going to do is how you have a pick of the week. It's a property. It's a listing that you love and you're going to explain why you love it. Then you're going to have three benchmark solds in the area. If you don't have three, that's okay. Maybe it's just one or two. showcasing that these are the new benchmarks for these price points, things to do. So things to do in that neighborhood. So this is a really comprehensive newsletter. And then you're going to have a video at the bottom, like a bomb bomb or a loom. We're going to walk through all of that, walk through your pick of the week, why you like it, walk through the solds. And essentially, this is how you're going to stay on top of your leads in a very personalized way while creating omnipresence, right? They're seeing you in their inbox. They're seeing you all over websites. They're seeing you in person. That's the whole idea. Number four, bus benches with a QR code. And you, the language you can use here is see all solds in your area here. Basically, this would lead to a newsletter sign up. So people get on your newsletter and say, hey, I send out recently sold properties every single week along with my pick of the week. You have a simple newsletter opt-in, they get on your newsletter and you start nurturing them. The fifth is Google My Business, making sure you have your area name and realtor or real estate agent in your Google My Business name. So having like Eric Preston, Kitsilano Realtor, for example, because what happens is sometimes people will search Kitsilano Realtor. If you have that in 
your Google My Business, there's a higher likelihood that you're gonna pop up for those keywords in a Google search. And so the age old question, well, how long does it take to see results with this? Well, obviously it varies. This is not an exact science. It depends on how much work you do, how much time and energy you put into what questions you're asking people, how you build relationships with people, how much are you spending on ads? How much are you spending on physical mail? How much are you spending on bus benches? All of these things, there's million and a half factors. Consistency over time is how you get results. This takes time and it takes time for you to become that recognized face, that recognized brand awareness. Because sometimes people might think you're new if they're just seeing you for the first time. But when they've seen you for two, three, four years, that's when you can have a really dominating presence. So it does take time for this all to come together. So you have to stick to it and commit to it. That's where you're gonna get the big wins. So if you're interested in how Agent Launch can help you build an omnipresent farming strategy and get into our Omni program, which stands for Omnipresent Meaningful Niche Message, you will have influence. And if you don't have those, you're not gonna be able to have influence and influence buying decisions. That's what our Omni program is about. If you're interested, there's a link down below. You can book a call with us. We will take a look at your business, give you some feedback. If your problem is conversion, if your problem is lead gen, if it's systems, whatever it is, we'll have a look at your business. We'll give you some feedback and we'll see if there's an opportunity for us to work together. Make sure you guys subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.